G'day viewers, Dave Lonigan, Arctic Film Productions. Bit of drone footage, I took in Iceland a few years ago. Beautiful country, you should check it out, it's a wonderful place. Now, what I want to talk to you about is the Antarctic. This landmass, we, we all know as Antarctica, uh, is 90%, 97% covered in ice. And it varies the thickness from 1.3 kilometres to uh, uh, 4.6, which was recorded over here about 1,500 kilometres from um, the Ross Ice Shelf. Now, interestingly, when you, when you look at this region on the east of Antarctica and also the west, is a lot of the land mass under the ice is actually below the sea level. And over, there are parts over here, there's quite a lot, this, this area over here is around two and a half kilometres below sea level. Now, um, the significance of that as we've changed through global warming, greenhouse gases, CO2 going in the atmosphere, we've increased the air temperature and also the ocean temperature all around the planet. Um, that's changed the uh, replenishment and melt rate. So what we're replenishing and what we're melting is changing. It's now melting quicker than what it gets replenished because the atmosphere has changed because of human habitation, greenhouse gases, fossil fuels. All right, we all know that. Now, what's of particular interest on the West Antarctic is the Thraits Glacier, which is over here. Now, that glacial front, where it comes out into the Southern Ocean, is 117 kilometers across, right, from one end to the other. Now, it's sort of, I've seen quite a few glaciers, and to think that a glacier could be that big is a bit staggering. It's dropping in height every year, by uh, three feet to a metre. Now, if you can imagine you've got a bottle of wine, you, you light it on the side, you've got a cork in it, and you pull that cork out, all the wine goes out, gone. This glacier is starting to separate away from the actual main part, which is you know holding all of this ice back, right? Cork comes out, everything comes out. It'll take time, of course. But it is a particular worry because it is starting to separate. And if we lose this section, if that was to melt into the, uh, into the Southern Ocean, it's going to affect sea level rise all around the planet. They think by about seven, uh, about seven metres. Now, if we lost all of the ice, the Antarctic, which is almost inconceivable, um, if that was all to melt, the whole lot, sea level rise would go up 70 metres. 70 metres, you just think, that's crazy. And the other thing to keep in mind is that during the winter months, the, the, uh, the ocean around the Antarctic freezes, right? It, it adds almost the same size again. I, well, I think it's about 80%. Anyway, <clears throat> the significance of that is its reflective ability to reflect back solar radiation from the sun, right? Because you get solar radiation coming in, it heats our planet. So if you're decreasing your ice mass here and also in the Northern Hemisphere, because what's been happening in the Northern Hemisphere is that each year the pack ice is being getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and also it's, it's decreasing in thickness, it's decreasing in size, and the rate at which it goes into the spring, um, the spring melt is accelerating. It's coming earlier every year because the ocean temperatures have warmed and the air temperature has warmed. So in the Northern Hemisphere, where we've lost a lot of that reflective ability, and in the Southern Hemisphere, same thing again. Now, the significance of that is that that again also heats the Earth more because you're losing that reflective ability. Now, this has all come about from the burning of fossil fuels, coal, and gas, etc., which we've been doing you know, for, a, for a couple of hundred years. Um, but we're accelerating our use of fossil fuels as our primary energy source. And it's going to be interesting. I, I think very, very soon as to uh, what happens with this glacier front here if, if this starts to draw uh, the West Antarctic shelf out into the... It's just staggering to think that, you know, um, a small change in temperature by, 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 by one degree, two degrees Celsius, can, and it's even less than that, can make such a huge difference on, it, on, on our planet. And... Um, I don't know, what do you think? I think it's a bit scary. But something else to think about is what happens to seawater when you heat it up? It expands, right? That's just what happens. So the areas that are gonna get more affected 
by the increase in ocean temperatures increasing are the regions in the equator on our planet. So the countries that lie within the equator are going to be more affected by sea level rise than uh, countries, say, like New Zealand, where the ocean temperatures are lower. So you're going to get areas in uh, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, um, uh, Indonesia, uh, Philippines, Solomon Islands, uh, Japan, those regions are going to get more impacted by sea level rise because they're going to have a bigger increase in ocean temperature than what the regions in the north and southern, the north and the south. Uh, I don't know, it's interesting times ahead for everybody, I think, but it all comes back to the same old thing. Greenhouse gases are going up because our reliance on fossil fuels is, uh, is, is only increasing as we're developing more. Um, interesting time ahead, I, I think. Now, um, getting back to the Antarctic, I, I, I'm down there in 2024. Um, I'm back up to Iceland in uh, later this year and then uh, again this year. Um, 